Bane Live. We are playing Vampire today. Continuing from last night. I left off at a pretty pretty bad spot. I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to get through it, but it was late and I was like, whoa. Night shift. Remember all we are playing as a good vampire. So we try not to take the the souls of the innocent, the lives. Although this John Doe guy was whipping my behind. <coughs> Oh, sweet. I'm glad it brought me here. Alright, let's do this. Did I collect from this other guy? Where is he? Oh, I guess I did. I think I'm looking for medicine. You have society? made an egregious error. Yes, I did. It's time we talked. Okay. Okay, and I took everything from there. Oh, why is this still locked? It's locked. I check like every room. Alright, let's kill this guy. <laughs> My cake is done. <clears throat> she put me to the the cake master. Uh, 
ready. Alright. Oh! Mr. Doe. I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. 
Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage. Oof. He almost had me a couple times there. Oh, I can't I can't get up there without doing a little whoosh whoosh. Can't go through either one, okay. Come on, let's go. What are you doing? Oh, why are you running? Don't run. Oh, you ran some more of them. Turned around. <clears throat> Who just whooshed in like that? Do you saw that? I saw the whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. This wasn't here before. to go up? Is that what it's telling me to do? But in which building? In this building. <coughs> okay, so I gotta go upstairs. Down one level? Can I even go on these? No, I can't. Alright, whatever. Similar to 
to the infected William Bishop. Must be the same strain. This sickness moves faster than influ. building okay that's ridiculous oh where'd you come from I cannot enter. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. You've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. 
When you finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? I have other concerns right now, Doctor. But I'm fine, thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Don't waste your time. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'll let you get some rest, then. Good evening, sir. Doctor. As for me, what a blundering idiot. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. You, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. It may seem strange, but your words have brought me some comfort here. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and... Now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in.
Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swans's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me since I have not wasted my time courting the press. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Tell me, Waverley. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon, and it has always come at a price. And personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative, it is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Dr. Reed.
It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. What do you think of Dr. Tippett's opinion of your promotion, Waverly? Tippett's is a good practitioner. Maybe just a little too attached to his prestigious position at the Pembroke Hospital. Really? That's exactly his diagnosis of you. A little too eager to get promoted? A little bit too proud? He has the right to think so. But I deserve this promotion. And I don't consider it anything but well earned. Have you heard about any blackmail going on in this hospital? Blackmail? Nonsense. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Ackroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Ackroyd really said is that you lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Ackroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. Have you heard any talk of blackmail going on in the hospital? If you're running some official inquiry, you had better question the patients. They know more than the staff, especially old Miss Jones. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? There are a lot of secrets around here. I'm not surprised someone tried to make money from them. What kind of secrets? I'm not in the gossip business, Dr. Reed. If you want to know more, you better talk to Harriet Jones. She's the oldest patient here. Goodbye, Milton. Flew took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfields, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. 
I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? We both are afflicted with a thirst for blood, Lady Ashbury. That is our nature. By vocation, we also have reason to visit the hospital. Logic dictates. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Good evening, Miss Halcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Have you heard of any blackmailing going on within these walls? I have no time for mortal games. My secrets are beyond their comprehension, Doctor Reed. I'll leave you, Mistress of the... better already. Can I go soon? Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Have you heard of any underhand dealings within the hospital? I don't have time for such nonsense, Doctor. I've work to do. Are you certain? You seem nervous. If you have something in mind, just speak up, Doctor. Otherwise, stop breathing down my neck. Blackmail is a serious matter, Nurse Hawkins. Everything is serious around here, Doctor Reed. Starting with patients who need me. 
Goodbye, Nas Hawkins. Do 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 do. What? Well, I, I guess that's it. Some error in the game, which is just ridiculous. And now it's taking forever. I can't do anything right now.